Why was Jedi Council member and one of the most powerful Jedi of the era in Shock T killed so easily during Order 66? In our pursuit of knowledge and understanding of a galaxy far, far away, we like to analyze avenues that history takes in the shaping of galactic lore. One of the biggest pivotal moments in the entire galaxy is the Second Jedi Purge or more commonly referred to, Order 66. It is a dark miracle that an operation on this scale was pulled off in the first place, and the strange events and coincidences that made it happen sometimes appear to be downright implausible. And yet, whether by luck or by the dark side of the Force influencing the galaxy, they happened anyway. One of said events is Master Shock T and how she was cut down by Anakin in her meditation, with the Jedi Master assigned to protect the temple, giving no resistance to the Dark Chosen One whatsoever. Jedi Master Shock T is infamous in the Star Wars Legendarium as having many inconsistent deaths littered across both legends and canon. But thanks to confirmation from Lucasfilm directly, we learn that Shock T's canon death is from the deleted Revenge of the Sith scene where she is stabbed by Anakin while she is meditating. This is also her death in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, and the one we get in Yoda's vision of Order 66, as seen in Season 6 of The Clone Wars. But anyway, let's get into it, and attempt to examine and explain why Shock T didn't put up a fight against Anakin. We know that Master Shock T was Anakin's primary target for Operation Nightfall, as Palpatine deduced her to be the biggest threat in the temple, as well as Anakin agreeing. In the novel, we know that Anakin asked the gatekeeper Jedi where exactly Shock T was, cluing us in that he believes her to be the biggest threat, and Anakin believes that if he can eliminate the Jedi Council member, the rest of the temple will fall with ease. Not only was Shock T an expert lightsaber duelist, but she was also a brilliant tactician. If anyone were to rally the remaining Jedi and mount a proper defense against Lord Vader in the 501st, it would be this council member. Shock T's species gave her an integral advantage against Anakin in this moment. As a Togruta, Shock T's mantras could sense the movement of things around her without even needing the Force to do so. The ultrasonic echolocation could reach up to 82 feet around her, and ironically, this allowed her to have sharpened spatial awareness. Because of this advantage given to her by her heightened perception of her surroundings, Shock T was among one of the finest Jedi fighters in group combat. We've seen the way she conducts herself in a group during the attack on Kamino, where she displays very fine saber skills and force abilities against the attacking Separatist forces. If we remember, Anakin had been there for the attack on Kamino personally, though he wasn't around to see Shock T in combat. He knew that she had successfully held the vital control point within the training facility and had beaten back the overwhelming Separatist forces with minimal clone casualties. Not only was Shock T a threat one on one, but she could organize a group very effectively, sensing all around them. This advantage made Shock T very important for the early stages of Order 66 and the Jedi Temple Purge. In fact, Shakti was so important that she was one of Vader's first few kills, as he had basically made a beeline straight for the meditation chamber, ignoring everyone on the way to the council member. This made sense, as not only was she important to the success of Operation Nightfall, but she was one of the last Jedi council members and the only Jedi council member at the temple, with Windu, Fisto, Sase Tin, Egan Kolar, and others all dead within the span of minutes, it would only be a matter of time before Shock T found out and sent a message out to secure the Jedi Council hollow channels. This assumption by Anakin was very accurate, as according to the gatekeeper, Master Shock T was already in the process of meditating on the events of the Senate office duel, sensing that something had gone horrifically wrong with Palpatine and Anakin. The disturbance in the Force had been felt, and Shock T was already seeking the answer to the problem, something that clued Anakin in to the fact that he needed to hurry. Shock T was confused and had entered deep meditation, trying to pierce the veil of the dark side to ascertain an answer, one that we bring to you today. What was occurring with the machinations of the dark side? But more importantly, Shock T was killed extremely easily by Anakin. She put up no fight against the Chosen One. And today, we have the answer. One may initially assume that she didn't know that Vader was there, as he likely could have hidden his presence in the Force and snuck in, 
Shakti was in very deep meditation, so it would make sense that she simply wouldn't sense him. This sort of thing has occurred before, and we can cite an occurrence in the new Sith Wars, for example, during the War of Light and Darkness. The Brotherhood of Darkness had engaged a Jedi fleet in fierce combat. Both Lord Khan and an unnamed Jedi Master were engaged in a conflict of battle meditation on the other command ships. However, a Twi'lek Sith Lord managed to brute his way onto the command ship of the Jedi, making his way through the halls of the ship with minimal resistance, and found the meditation chamber where the Jedi was meditating. In the novel Darth Bane Path of Destruction, we are told that the Jedi Master was so ingrained in battle meditation that she raised no resistance, and because of this, the Twi'lek Sith Lord cut her down with no resistance whatsoever. We had originally thought that this is why Shakti died so easily, as she was trying to do what the Jedi had failed to achieve since the Phantom Menace break through the Veil of Darkness, as Shakti sensed that the moment was dire. She knew that the council was crumbling, and she had one last chance to discover the truth. This was Shakti's own final stand. But thanks to the deleted scene and the novel, we do know that Shakti acknowledges Anakin Skywalker's presence, and that rather through her mantras or through the Force, she could sense Anakin. Vader only took a couple steps into the chamber, and Shakti says, what is it, Skywalker? Without opening her eyes, before immediately getting impaled through the chest. So the mystery deepens. She knew that Anakin was in the room, and not just because of her mantras. It wasn't as if she had only sensed the movement, but rather, through the Force, she could ascertain that it was Skywalker. If she could sense his presence and identity, then by all logic, she should have been able to sense his mental state and the darkness now within him. But now we come to the answer. Shakti sensed the anger and conflict within Vader, but misinterpreted it like the other Jedi would. Let's look into it from their perspective. They hear the Sith Lord is in Palpatine's office, and four Jedi Masters run to arrest him. Twenty minutes follow, and the entire temple senses an earth-shattering disturbance. The Force itself shakes, and then complete radio silence. Then, another ten to twenty minutes pass. Anakin shows up at the temple with the entire 501st Legion, and inside of Skywalker, they sense anger, pain, and fear. The veil that the dark side has been casting over their vision for the entirety of the Clone Wars now grows thicker, and the dark side feels as though it is all around the Jedi. With this in mind, of course none of the Jedi knew what was happening. There was no way they could have figured out who was behind this until after it happened and Vader drew his weapon. The clones opened fire, and the mystery was solved. When Shakti sensed Anakin, she did sense the dark side but she interpreted it that something terrible had happened to the Jedi, not that he had turned fully. The veil of the darkness was complete. The Jedi thought that the clones were there for their protection, and Anakin's pain was bred from the events that caused the disturbance. When Shakti was in meditation, she was attempting to pierce the veil of the dark side and learn the truth of what had happened. And then, in walks Skywalker, carrying a storm of emotion. She knew something had happened, so when Shakti asks, what is it? Shakti is not asking him why he is there. She is asking him what happened. She believes that Anakin is sensing the same thing. She is surrounded by the dark side, and because of that, it shrouds Anakin in this moment. She cannot tell the difference between him and the darkness that surrounds her until it is far too late. Shakti likely never knew. But anyway, my friends, this is why Shakti died so quickly at the hand of Anakin, and why she couldn't sense the dark side in Anakin during Operation Nightfall. But tell us, what are your thoughts on this explanation? And are there any other details in the lore, specifically in Revenge of the Sith, that you would like to see explored? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today, and may the Force be with you always.